Hello, and welcome to the Chapter 3 Video Reading Guide for the OpenStax textbook for Physics 131. This chapter, which begins on page 87 of the PDF of the textbook, covers two-dimensional kinematics. In particular, we will be spending quite a bit of time in this chapter talking about vectors. The idea of a vector was introduced in Chapter 2, but we'll really be getting into a lot of mechanics of how to use and manipulate vectors in this particular chapter. So, moving on, we're going to get started with Section 3.1, which is Introducing the Idea of Kinematics in Two Dimensions. Now, as was discussed in the Chapter 2 reading, kinematics is the study of motion. We're not to why things move yet, we're just trying to describe the motion of objects mathematically. So, here you have a nice example of someone walking in a nice city of grid streets. And how to use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out the total distance traveled by a person. You'll be using a lot of the Pythagorean theorem in our study of two-dimensional kinematics and throughout this course. So if you are by chance unfamiliar or not comfortable or it's been just a really long time about with regards to the Pythagorean theorem, please come and see me as soon as possible so we can get you up to speed. Now, at the bottom of page 89, you have a little bit of comment about the independence of perpendicular motions. While this is just a small subsection of 3.1, I really want to put a star by this, because this is really a fundamental idea that probably deserves a little bit more credit than this. And essentially, the idea is that the vertical and two and horizontal components of motion are independent of each other, which means a velocity, which you'll recall from chapter two is a vector quantity horizontally, in, which we might call the x direction, does not change at all our motion up and down, what we might call the y direction. So a velocity in x, no change to y. So this is a really, really important idea that I really think you should take a little bit of time to think about, and there are some questions on in your homework. Here's a nice graphic representing that idea. This is a really good graphic to think about and really make sure you understand. You can see in this graphic that for an object that's falling, which is what you're looking at here, the velocity in the vertical directions changes. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger as the object falls faster, faster, and faster. Of course, this is what we would expect. For an object thrown, however, we have something kind of interesting. The vertical components get bigger and bigger and bigger, just like for the object that was just dropped, but its horizontal motion, its speed side to side, is unchanged. So this is a really nice example of how up and down and side to side are completely independent of each other. 